Greetings all on this Saturday, the day of Saturn, and I'm here, Claudia Manchanza, radical herbalist, medical herbalist, at um, the Hampstead Hill, um, Golders Hill Park actually, um, and it's Saturday and it's really, really busy, so I'm trying to not be too noisy because um, I don't want to disturb people, and the herb that I'm doing today is called Mullein or Vabascum Thapsus and the reason I've come here because this is the place where uh, at the end of like the summer like August the Vabascum is taller than my body and it's everywhere and it's just amazing medicine so um, here it is at the beginning of the summer this is the Vabascum I'm hoping that my tripod stays still so um, the name Vabascum um, it's supposedly come from the word that means barbascum, which I think means beard, and it refers to the fact that it's fluffy. So if you feel the leaf, it's really lovely and fluffy, and it gets fluffier. And its other name is uh, mullein, which people know um, is the most sort of common name. And then some older names are beggar's blanket, and I would surmise that that's because um, people who didn't have money, poor people would probably have used to make beds or comforting things out of it. Another name is Our Lady's Flannel and I think that's because it probably would have been used for uh, menstrual pads. Uh, when it's dried out it's very absorptive and fluffy. Another name is Candlewick Plant and that's because it the stems of the plant were dipped in wax to make candles and also to light lamps. Another name is mule tail and another name is hag's taper and if you ever were hear the word hag it comes from the Anglo-Saxon word meaning hedge so if anyone calls you an old hag they're calling you a, an old hedge which is quite funny and um, on the second year of growing, it, um, it grows, it, it flowers after um, a period of dormancy the winter before and it has bright yellow, um, sulfuric yellow flowers that only flower for one day but then it flowers regularly into a cone and I'll try and attach a photo of these very plants when they're flowering and also the um, seed capsule later in the year drops seeds of its parents beneath it so the cycle in the same area keeps on going so herbalists tend to know where um, the plants grow in different areas like you know if I want mullein which flowers at the time that people tend to get ear infections. It's really interesting, last year I was actually at this spot here um, collecting some mullein flowers to make an oil and someone messaged me as I was here saying, what do you know about ear infections for kids? And it was just uncanny. And it's like that with pilewort, when I harvest pilewort, people always say I've got hemorrhoids. So the plants really kind of, you know, are there when we need them. Another name for this plant is Jupiter's Staff. And it's the plant's been used as a medicine for thousands of years, but it's also been used to make dyes. Shea Amani, if you're into your dyes, this is one of them. And um, you can smoke it as well. It's been used in asthma mixes and to dilute, or not dilute, but to be added with tobacco and other smokables. And also the leaves have been, they're so fluffy, they've been used to make tinder in the past. Um, indigenous people of um, Turtle Island use the leaves um, as inner soles in their shoes and then the colonizers came and copied that and I think the reason for doing that would be comfort and insulation and here if you can see I've actually got my lane in my shoe I'm trying it out so um, the plant is used in herbal medicine very popularly and it's used the key words I would say it's used for is ear lung and bowels I think they're the key words for um, its use in herbal medicine and 
um, its actions are bitter, so the leaves are bitter and they have chemicals called iridoid glycosides and lignins that are bitter. It's chemically, it's also mucilage, which means it's, it's demulsioned and soft, it's got a softness to it. Um, there's tannin in the leaves that makes it astringent, so it's wonderful for things like diarrhoea because if you've got diarrhoea, it's got the demulsion to smooth the gut, but it's also got the astringents to tan the gut, to bind the proteins together if you've got an inflamed, leaky gut. It's emollient, that fluffiness and the oils in it are emollients, which means it allows sort of moisture to the skin for dry conditions. And it's often used when, an, when in earache where there's loads of flaky skin around the ear. It's a sedative, but sort of like sedative to the lungs, if that makes sense. So when you're stressed out because you've got a like a nighttime cough and you can't rest, it's a really excellent remedy for that. It's also been used for um, coughing conditions like um, cystic fibrosis and um, COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. It's considered a narcotic and that means it changes, it alters the mood and it's also an anti helminthic which means it kills worms. And what's interesting, the seeds contain a chemical called rotenone which is like a crystalline substance and it's um, when it's sort of concentrated, this chemical, it's used as a pesticide, but it also kills fish and insects. It's probably toxic to us. And the narcotic um, retinone, I think it's up to 13% in the seeds. It is actually used for fishing because you throw the powder and you grind the seeds down and throw the powder into water and the fish will be dopey so they're easy to catch and it's a bit like this the way there's a plant called Pasida erythrina which is um, Jamaican dogwood and I know that I've seen that thrown into water and the fish actually lie on their sides. Uh, the, the, the flowers contain saponins like uh, one of them is glycorrhizin and that's present in licorice and it kills bacteria. It contains fluffy polysaccharides um, the leaves contain 2% resin or a gummy resin and I think that you know must contribute to the medicinal properties of the plant. It also contains lots of flavonoids including luteolin, rutin and their glycosides and one of the ones that's been studied is called verbascoside which is um, which is actually anti-cancer has been shown to have neuroactive activity and also inhibits glioma cells in a petri dish so we don't know if that does that in the body and then these chemicals the iridoid glycosides which are uh, they're called a centerpentane um, ring with um, a heterocyclic a six heterocyclic ring are very strongly antibiotic and these chemicals um, these iridoid chemicals are very similar in structure to the antibiotics called the mycins like streptomycin um, erythromycin and historically the herbs been used for TB and that's a mycobacteria and there's actually a study on um, PubMed like the Public Library of Medicine, so it's really noisy here because it's a Saturday in the park. And the title of the article is Can, Can Mullein Weed Beat TB Where Modern Drugs Are Failing? And if you look at PubMed, other, other studies include um, the plant for otitis media, um, which is an inner ear infection. Um, and that's the infusion of the leaves. And it's also shown to be effective against Klebsiella pneumoniae. Um, it's also antioxidant, antibacterial. I'm just gonna stop the video and do it again in a minute.